So, okay. so Gar Garima, welcome to this debriefing session and congratulations on scoring a 710. Uh, how does it feel? Thank you, uh, it feels great, honestly. Uh, I was just aiming for something above a 700 mm. and I'm honestly very relieved because it's a safe score for the school that I want to apply to. So I'm honestly just very relieved and very grateful. Okay. And you said you've never taken a competitive exam before or, or not of the same scale as a GMAT. You just, you're, you're, you, you just graduated from college. You're going to start your first job. So this was kind of also the nerves piece uh, uh, that was there as, as part of the test, but you know, having, and this is your only attempt, is that, or have you taken another attempt? Yes, back? yes. No, no, no. This is my only attempt. But that's actually job very well done, I would Thank say. You. So, especially considering that you started from a five sixty when you took when I'm looking at your Sigma X mocks, start from a five sixty. So it's a good one fifty point improvement or so. So let's go back to that point where you had that five sixty score in the first mock test that you took. So how did you plan your preparation from that point on? So uh, I took the first mock sometime around last year in May, so May 2019, mm -hmm. which is when I first planned on uh, starting my preparation for the GMAT. So I got a 560 and naturally I was pretty discouraged. I mean, I know the GMAT requires preparation, but uh, I wasn't really sure where to go from that 560. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I only had a trial of eGMAT, I think. I don't think I'd like purchased or maybe I had purchased and I gave the mock, but uh, I wasn't really sure where to go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I spent about, you know, eight months to a year just kind of trying to figure out what to do. The biggest mm -hmm. mistake I made was I didn't watch the EGMAT introductory videos on like how to plan, uh, you know, your how to make a study plan and how to study and how to study effectively taking ability quizzes. I didn't watch that. I thought okay. I'd just jump into, you know, the content and start doing it. Mm -hmm. So I would do it on and off and obviously it didn't really have much benefit. So after I after college kind of ended, which is around three months ago when lockdown started and I came home, so I had relatively uh, a lot more free time. That's when I really sat down and started studying for GMAT properly. Okay. I was able to devote more than an hour a day mm -hmm. and I was able to get that consistency. So the first thing I did, which I think was a huge, just like a game changer was watching, uh, you know, how to make a study plan and just how like setting target scores and figuring out oh, when to take an why, why was that a game changer for you because before that i was kind of just shooting in the dark mm -hmm. i would do a top like i would do algebra and then not practice any questions and then move on to geometry and then like two weeks later come back to algebra and wonder why i didn't why i wasn't why i wasn't able to solve the questions properly mm -hmm. so i think i was reading one of the blog posts on egmat because i was getting kind of frustrated and i was like i don't know where to go with this so then I watched all the tutorial videos, the introductory ones, like your GMAT roadmap and all of that. Mm. And then that's when I figured out, okay, this is the path I'm supposed to take. Mm. And so I would do each topic. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I would do algebra and then practice the questions in Scholaranium. Mm -hmm. And then take the ability quiz. And like, until I was happy with the score I was getting in the ability quiz, I didn't always hit the target scores right away. Mm -hmm. But I figured I need that I was okay to move on to the next topic and then come back and revise so that really helped got it okay now now uh, uh so you would go through a topic and, and as and you talked about algebra so I actually took your algebra uh, course out it's on my screen right now and um, i'm going to actually share the stats over here uh, and you did a fairly decent job with the concept quizzes but the practice quizzes you were especially very good so how did you i mean how did you make use of this feedback, these scores that you were getting right after every quiz to, to improve? So the first time, so uh, if you can see, I've like revised some of the courses. Yes. So another game changer for me was uh, the first time I gave the quizzes, I didn't do so well in all of them. Mm. Uh, and I read somewhere, I don't know where I read this on EGMAT, but uh, somewhere it recommended that you should only move on to the next topic if you get at least 80% yes. in the quizzes. So once I started aiming for that, I would come back and give the quizzes after a week or so and try to get more than 80%. Mm -hmm. That really strength, strengthen like quant concepts for me, especially because I'm also good with uh, numbers and quant in general. Okay. So that really helped me. So why do you think it, why do you think even coming back after a week, just doing the same set of questions helped you? What did it do to you? I think uh, in general, I was able to, so the thing is while I was studying quant, I would make notes uh about the concepts 
so i didn't look at the videos again after like a week or two weeks after you know this had had a bit of a break i would just look at the concepts that i'd written and then i would go and give the quizzes again mm-hmm. and some questions i remembered but i didn't remember the approach that i'd used got it at that time because it was a pretty hit or miss approach and i was i was either working backwards or i was just guessing or i was doing process of elimination mm-hmm. so it did help to give the quizzes again until i got an 80 i don't think it helps to give it immediately right, after first attempt because then there is no point but i think i spaced out my attempts enough for so me you, to benefit you, you made two points that i want to kind of go a bit more deeper into mm-hmm. so so this i'm going to go into the second point the one that you made later which is that uh, the first first time you would attempt the quizzes you you either had a plugging in approach or you would guess um, yeah. and then and you know so and then what would be the approach when you would come a week later and do the same quizzes so how would that approach change so uh, the first time i uh, attempted any of the quizzes mm-hmm. uh, i mean if i understood the question obviously i would follow the eg mat process mm-hmm. but uh, because i was kind of used to following like this hit or miss approach where i was just trying to get the answer so mm-hmm. i was like okay if, you know two answers are really similar i bet one of them has to be the correct answer because they probably okay. the test takers are probably trying to trick me with mm-hmm. a similar but not correct answer so that's that was my approach in the beginning then the second time around when i was gi- uh, giving the second attempt what i realized was that if i was following the same process for the questions i was able to understand the questions mm-hmm. and even though i might have taken say like 4 to 5 minutes to solve a question which is very long for yes. an average time for the gmat but uh, i understood the logic a lot better and that was like satisfying and then it helped me a lot more in scholarium because the Because, next time you do a similar question yeah. it would not take 5 minutes yeah exactly so that's how the second attempt changed wow well, that's good now my second question which is and that's that's a very good answer by the way you you've summarized it uh-huh, thank you just just to to kind of give you feedback your thought process for uh, for for your experience and and your age is is more mature than i've seen with individuals of your age so oh thank you so much so so that's that's really good now second question you said is you said you made notes Yeah. Uh, how did you make notes or how did you, did you decide which point to note down i mean what was that trigger so with so i in general i learned by making notes hmm. so with quant i would with quant there were some things i already knew because some of them were like basics that you learned in high school mm-hmm. but uh, some of the more tricky for example the remainder finding process in mm-hmm. divisibility and remainders i found that a really good technique and i wrote down all the steps for it and i would go over it later got it um, so for example i wrote that down so the remainder of the question you would write it down for example yeah exactly and so sometimes i would just pause the screen and spend like a minute writing down whatever was on the screen got it uh, and with verbal i all the concept videos i just wrote down like an example and then i would write every concept that was associated with it so for example in sentence correction i would write a sentence and say okay look these are the errors in this type of sentence So that's what I did on the notes end of things. That's very nice. I I I must really say I must commend you again. This was, I mean, this was phenomenal with regards to the the the, the good habits that you're coming that you you you're you're talking about. This is going to help you uh, going forward big time. Thank so, you. So so that part is and and the nice thing about this is that you know you you had the course for about a year or so and and you didn't do this for mm-hmm. the first nine months but in the last three months you you when you put your head at it say I've got to ace it. you yeah. you actually did that so it was very nice um so so let's we talked about quant or we talked about an example in quant with algebra um we kind of you briefly talked about scholarenium so let's kind of go into scholarenium mm-hmm. with the context of quant and let's talk about how you utilize scholarenium so scholarenium as i said like after every topic whether it was in quant or verbal mm-hmm. i would go ahead and practice i would do cementing quizzes first Mm-hmm. because i figured so i didn't do a lot of easy type questions i did more of i started with medium so i did cementing quizzes the medium level ones for every for every topic first then i would move on to hard mm-hmm. and then when i felt fairly confident i would go to ability quiz mm mm-hmm. uh and then whenever i would uh, in the middle i would just keep doing uh, og questions i did a lot for math and i'd done og questions before like before i even uh, did my eg mat preparation like seriously mm-hmm. whenever i could i would do a little bit of og so 
I've probably done more OG questions that have than have been tracked on my uh, scholarium platform. Okay. Yeah, I probably did more than that. Mm-hmm. But obviously, the significant benefit I got was only from the scholarium questions because I could because so the great thing was in scholarium each of the questions uh, every time I had a doubt it had already already been answered with the little question and answer thing at the yes. bottom. I found that very helpful. Mm-hmm. And there were some questions. Um, there are some questions in GMAT that you just can't figure out no matter how much you try to apply mm-hmm. like high school maths. There are just some rules that you need to know. For example, I think like remainder theorem or like binomial theorem mm-hmm. um, or the, the, there's this thing with exponents which I'm forgetting now. Mm-hmm. So or, like the eGMAT experts had linked all those topics in the question and answer series. They were like links from, from the GMAT club, from the blog. Mm-hmm. So those were really helpful. Those are the questions I got stuck on the most. And I, everywhere else I looked, I just couldn't find answers to those. So I found that really, really helpful and really unique to EGMAT because I tried other companies like free trials mm-hmm. and I just couldn't get the hang of it. Got it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I would definitely have a subject matter team. Uh, commend them for this and I would really have them listen to this part of the interview. Yeah, it's, yes. it really helped. <laughs> Yes, and, and, and we do this, I mean, very, very closely. So one of the things that we do is we, we track uh, um, your satisfaction. So um, mm-hmm. I'm going to show a dashboard, uh, for example, right now over here. This is, this is, we track metrics for everything within the company. So this is over the last one week. We really say, okay, how many customers uh, have logged in? How many users have visited our forums? How many queries have been posted over, overall? And how many queries have been responded? And, mm-hmm. um, and then we also track, okay, so these are, even though only 514 queries have been posted overall by about, I think there is also another metric which was there, but which is deleted now, is how many people have posted this 500 mm-hmm. queries and this typically, it's about 300 people, mm-hmm. but overall, uh, 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 9,600 times people have visited the forum posts in, in the last one week or so. This data is all for the last one week overall. And, and, the, and then we also look at how many forum post queries are posted compared to how many activities have been completed by our customers. So, so an activity would be a concept file, an application file, a quiz or so. In sentence correction, for example, 36 and a half thousand activities were completed last week. And, and against those 259 mm-hmm. queries were done last week. So, so we, we kind of maintain that ratio to really say right. how many queries were, were, were there. And then the other piece that we do is we have something called CSAT. I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, in CSAT, we look at customer satisfaction. So, so we ask you, you probably have given up, we've been asked one of these poll questions, are you satisfied, very satisfied, or are you neutral or something? And we track this CSAT score every week where mm-hmm. uh, 169 yeah. people responded in here, 101 of them said they were satisfied. Uh, 41 said they were very satisfied, 18 said neither, and but nine of them were dissatisfied. And then we look at why were people dissatisfied, what can we do about it, and so on and so forth, so that we continue to improve upon this over mm-hmm. here. Which query was it? So so feedback like yours definitely helps because uh, if you've not, never posted a query, you don't get that survey. But the fact that, hey, when we get positive feedback, it helps people like you who don't post a query either. So, so let's go to the verbal side of things. So yeah. how, how I didn't you... honestly, I didn't feel the need to post a query because, because there were already so many queries that were there. Exactly. And they were all answered so well. So any time I would think of something, it was already answered. And I was pretty happy with that because I'm not used to like just posting queries or commenting on anything in general. So I was really happy with that. I was like, everything's already there. There's nothing that's stopping me. Like there was no uh, speed breaker in my preparation. So, so to say. Because everything was already there. So that was amazing. So, and that's one of the things, I mean, you're ni- like 90% of our students, 90% of our students don't post queries. Mm-hmm. I mean, you saw only 300 people post queries a- in a week or so. And the forum posts was about 9,000 plus times. Oh, so, wow. so, 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 so if you just look at that piece over there, you would, you would see that. Mm-hmm. So, so let's go to the verbal part. So what was, the big aha, or how did you plan your verbal mm-hmm. preparation, A, and, and then what was the big aha moment for you over there? So with verbal, um, I figured I would be better at verbal mm-hmm. uh, than quant, but after I got to 560, I figured that 
verbal is probably very different than what i was expecting so verbal i wasn't uh, i was a little unclear at least in quant i knew that i was like generally weak so i was like okay i'm going to approach these topics one by one with verbal i because the gmat tests verbal in such a unique way i would say like critical reasoning or sentence correction there's no vocabulary based testing mm-hmm. or no you know this general english based so it was a different process so i the first one i started with was i think reading comprehension because those are long passages and i honestly didn't think that a course could help me in any way because i was like you know it's a reading comprehension if i'm just going to have to guess the how answer can you get teach it reading right. how can you teach yeah, this yeah exactly so yeah. i was like you know if i'm going to get it right i get it right but then i went through the course and they were like okay hey this is how a passage is supposed to flow it can go in the same direction or it can change direction like in terms of the author's line of thinking uh, take notes when you're reading the passage so you don't have to go back to it summarize it mm. and that really really helped because i was scoring if you see like my first ability quiz in rc i think i scored like 43 percentile or something it was pretty low mm-hmm. so and then after that it improved a lot and similarly with cr um cr i found the course amazing just like the approach to cr mm-hmm. in that was outlined in the concepts i found it so helpful and every because cr you kind of can always argue that one option is better than the other but with eg mad i found that every question was consistent with the approach that was explained with the concept so i was never like hey but you said this thing here and now you're mm-hmm. saying this so i loved how consistent it was and there was never any room for confusion uh with I'm, cr I'm glad content you said that i'm going to tell yeah, pile that pile created this the cr <laughs> course so uh, i'm going to let definitely let her know mm-hmm. of this okay with sentence correction that's it that's it sentence correction also so sentence correction i was kind of confident in my abilities uh that was the only topic i was kind of comfortable with but obviously i was in for a pretty nasty surprise when i gave some of the quizzes because i realized i was missing those minute errors uh when it came to like either or i mean the obvious ones i could catch but you know those sort of uh, the nuances of the language which you don't always realize some that you kind of ignore when you're speaking for example so because of vg mat i was able to catch those and correct those in time i i will say one thing again again and i don't really say it to a lot of students if you watch my interviews on 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 youtube um you have a an 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 a really good ability to to um, to self critique which is very important i mean um, i'm looking at your your sigma x mock score the first mock score and again the order in which you've gone r c then c r and then s c it's the perfect order and you you started with a fairly good score in s c you had a 33 in s c mm-hmm. in your first set my x mark and, uh, and 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 even then i mean the 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 critical cr- the critique that you've given as to where you were missing in sentence correction that's spot on i mean you had the general idea right but you were there were these nuances that you were missing so really good job at self critique as what i would say so uh, So yeah that's good uh, that's definitely Thank you. Good. uh that's um, so let's talk about next steps you want to go to ylp uh, yes. uh, so why an mba so um because i have spent like the last 5 years doing commerce i mainly my interest is in finance and economics and more okay. so in business in general okay um i really like the idea of learning how to make a business grow or how to like just commercialize anything mm-hmm. and uh, yeah that's why i think an mba i think it's one of the safest uh, courses to do i think it's kind of like one of those evergreen courses that never really loses its touch i mean there's always the knowledge that you take away from it is you know always going to be useful uh i agree with constantly that. remained Okay, great. I, I, I completely that's agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. so, so, tell me a bit. Uh, I, we talked about your school before we started recording this interview. I'm a, a mm-hmm. bit more curious. So, if you don't mind, can you tell me a bit about your family? I mean, what do your parents do? Are they are they like are they professionals? Do they run a business? Just in general. So, 
yeah sure i don't mind so uh, so my dad works in the government um so he also has a background similar to mine like commerce and you know he did his mba but now he works in the government mm-hmm. um my mom is a homemaker and my brother actually did i have an older brother who did engineering and he's actually also be going to he's also going to do his mba from isb only mm-hmm. uh, so he is supposed to join next year i think but Good. yeah so he's is, is done with the gmat yes he did his gmat yeah okay how did, what how did he do he got a 720 okay damn it 10 points lower yeah i know <laughs> yes so much for sibling rivalry yes yeah so, i Yeah, did, he got a seven. But did you beat him on verbal or? He said he doesn't remember his uh, individual I, score. Yeah, yes, yes. So <laughs> that remains undecided. He can say, "Hey, spend twenty-five bucks, get the ESR." <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he, exactly. No, no, he can download it even today from from the GMAT free of charge. He just, I, I asked him. I was like, "Hey, do you remember your like verbal and comp score?" He's like, "No, it was, it was so long ago. I can't remember." Yes. It's like, okay, I see how it is. Yes. Well, that's good. That's that's. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm glad both of you be doing. Um, the reason why I asked was because the reason for doing an MBA, the fact that you want really to to know more about how to grow a business or something. That's mm-hmm. typically. I mean, most kids or working professionals don't really have that mentality at the age that you have it at. You've not gone. Mm-hmm. You've, you've not started your first job yet. So yeah. the, the very fact that you have it got me thinking about it as to uh, why. What's what's the background? But but yeah, it's very interesting that despite uh, starting your, despite the fact that you've not started your first job, you still are thinking about it in this way. So again, really really good, right reasons for doing an MBA. So um, so yeah, uh, how can we help? Let me ask this. um so first i'm really grateful that uh, you chose to speak to me i've seen some of your interviews on youtube so i'm just really grateful for this time um i think the main thing i want guidance with is just how to go about uh, mba interviews and in general like a mindset that that will help me get through business school uh you know if i do get in so yeah mainly interview and just you like how to it. go about b school how to get the most out of it so so one thing that i tell people which i don't think i need to tell you but i'll just say this because you you do it instinctively is is a lot of people really try and give answers which they think would be good they don't give answers from their heart you do give answers from your heart so 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 keep doing that is what i would say so 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 i mean what seems right to okay. you is generally right and which is how i see that your answers are have been okay. in 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 this in this piece so when i asked why do you want to do an mba mm-hmm. You, you you know uh uh you you really didn't say i want to be x y and z and i want to really just do this and that and that and, and and it's not that it's a bad answer but for someone who's not even started her first job who hasn't had that many examples in front of her mm-hmm. that is not an answer with which if i were to cross mm-hmm. question you you would have good data to back it up okay but you really yeah. said i want to i want to understand how to grow a business and all that's a good answer for someone at your age and and for someone with your level of experience it's mm-hmm. an honest answer um uh that's what would i so for interviews uh i'm going to say two things one is prepare okay for isb the questions okay. are out there prepare and 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 prepare in the context of something that you are passionate about okay mm-hmm. uh the second is um, again if things don't make logical sense to you and someone says say this don't say those things because if they don't make logical sense to you you probably won't be able to pull it off they might be wrong especially now that i know you for about 25 minutes and i have asked you a few mm-hmm. questions and you've gotten given some really logical responses so you don't need that kind of help and okay. and, and, and the third thing is you know if since you and your brother would be applying kind of at the same time right or so if if am i am i correct so he is already uh, he's already gotten in he's mm-hmm. supposed to uh, you know go for the course next year mm-hmm. if i managed to get in this round i would be doing it after two year, two or three years after three years so but but, but like a, he's gone through the process already right yeah yeah so, not ylp he did another route for yeah, isb yeah regular mba right he's gone through the regular mba process Yeah, the, they have their early entry option. I am doing like the college student route. Yeah, yeah the YLP is the college student route. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, I would 
really say that you know get a commitment from him to really say he should do your mock interviews uh, oh okay that's okay. a good idea make sure that you get a commitment from him and make mm-hmm. sure that before he even starts his first interview he creates an evaluation grid that's available to you okay so you know what you're being evaluated on and when he does the evaluation so so in some ways keep him objective Mm-hmm. because another big thing okay. with siblings is you know the objectivity can go away if you start with that okay this is the this is what our goal really is uh, uh, you are my older brother so you're you're you should sense spend time with me and and but i'm going to keep you objective on this and that's kind of what what mm-hmm. i would say i mean you don't need a lot of help frankly uh, okay <laughs> if you needed i would have told you so okay. uh, um, that's really yeah at the same time if you want to uh, uh, you know work with a few admission consultants i can recommend a couple to you uh, okay but but uh, 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 did your brother use an admission consultant oh i believe he did but only for part of the process so they weren't with him from the beginning so only for like the essay and i think interview okay so i mean you could use the same person who did mm-hmm. he use do you know i believe he used yan one it's okay. one of the companies yeah, yeah. The company, i don't know how yes. big it is uh it's not super big it's not super small or reasonably successful so if he's happy with it use that otherwise okay. i can suggest a couple as well so i think if you need just reach back reach out to me overall who will do mm-hmm. okay so 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 that definitely would would help uh so 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 i think that part is what i would say but i mean my my